We often need to store on the memory a list of elements, with the same type of information, but different values. For example, the travel agency may need to operate with a group of customers that fulfill a specific requirement. Or they may need to process information on certain specific data regarding a group of tourist attractions. And this could mean having to temporarily load those lists in the memory. To solve this type of requirement, it's necessary to create a structure in the memory capable of storing a collection of elements. As we've seen, structured data types allow us to define structures that store varied data corresponding to one element. For example, when we store the identifier, the name and the address of one customer. To store several elements with customer data, we saw that it was necessary to define a structured data type and indicate that it is a collection. Let's do it in Genexus. We select the structured data type SDT customer that we had created, right click with the mouse, select Save As, and name it SDT Customers. Now we click on the Is Collection checkbox. When we compare the structure of the SDT customer versus the SDT customers, we see that the latter includes the same members in the former, but grouped into substructure called SDT customers item. This substructure was automatically created when we indicated that it was a collection. Each item will store the data of one customer, and the collection will store the group of customers. To load the collection's data, we will use a data provider object. This object enables us to load a data structure, for example, based on data from the database, and returns that structure already loaded. Let's create a data provider in Genexus. We press Ctrl N, choose the data provider type, and name the object Data Provider Customers. We can see that Genexus positions us in the source section of the data provider. Here's where we will declare how we want the data to be loaded in the collection that we want to return. We can see how easy it is to declare the load. We go to the window of the Knowledge Base Navigator, find the structured data type, SDT Customers, and drag it to the source of the data provider. We can see that Genexus automatically wrote several lines of text. If we open the properties of the data provider, we can see that Genexus assigned the name of the collection SDT Customers to the output property. This means that the data provider will return a collection of the structured data type SDT Customers loaded with data. Since the SDT Customers is already a collection, it is not necessary to set value of the collection property to true. This is something we would do if we wanted the data provider to return a collection from a simple structured data type. Now let's analyze what Genexus wrote in the source. We can recognize the name of the structured data type SDT customers, which is a collection. Between brackets is the substructure of the collection's item. We can compare this against the structure of the SDT. We can see that Genexus represented, in the form of text, the structure of SDT customers, and left the member's ID, name, and address ready in the SDT customers item item for loading a value to them. Because we'll be loading this collection based on the content of the customer table, we'll assign the value of the customer ID attribute to the ID member the value of the customer name attribute to the name member, and the value of the customer address attribute to the address member. We can see that we have not indicated at all to Genexus how we want these values to be loaded. That is, the customer table should be navigated, and for each customer found, its data should be copied to an item in the collection. What we are doing is simply declaring with which values we want Genexus to load the collection of customers, based on the values of the attributes defined in the customer transaction. Based on this declaration, when Genexus finds attributes on the right side of the assignments, 
it tries to find the base table that contains those attributes, similarly to how the base table of a for each is determined. Clearly, in this case, the base table is customer. Since we're assigning values to an item of a collection type structure, Genexus will go through the customer table, and for each customer found, it'll copy the data stored in the customer ID, customer name, and customer address attributes to the ID, name, and address members respectively of a new item in the collection. The final result is that the data of all customers in the database will be stored in the collection. Now let's create a web panel object to view the contents of the customer's collection. A web panel is a very versatile object that enables us to deploy information, among other things, like entering data or building a home page for our application. We press Ctrl N, select web panel as object type, and call it web panel view customers. We now go to the section that includes variables in the web panel to define a variable customers of the type SDT customers. We go to the web form section and from the toolbox we drag an attribute or variable control and select the customers variable. Because it's a variable of the type SDT collection, Genexus opens up a dialog box for us to select which members of the SDT customers we want to view. All of them are selected, and, since we want to view them all, we press OK. We can see that Genexus created a series of controls in the web form in order to view the various elements in the customer's variable. We now go to the events section in the web panel, where the combo box on the upper right offers us several event names from which we select start. When we make this selection, Genexus writes the start and end commands of the start event. Now let's encode the start event. We write ampersand and select the customers variable. Now we load this variable of the collection type using the data provider we created earlier. To do this, we write the equal sign and then go to the knowledge base navigator window where we find the customer's data provider and drag it to the right of the equal sign. We complete the instruction by adding two brackets. With the instruction we've just written, we are invoking the data provider customers, which will return a collection of customers that will be loaded in the customers variable. We should recall that the customers variable is of the SDT customers type. And in the data provider, a collection of that type is loaded and returned because we dragged SDT customers to its source. Therefore, since in the start event of the web panel we've already defined the loading of the customers variable invoking the data provider we defined, and because we've already included the customers variable in the form, everything is ready for us to press F5, and now we can view the data loaded in the collection. We can see that Genexus added a link corresponding to the View Customers web panel. We click on the link and can view a display on screen of all the customers that were stored in the database. This data was extracted from the database by the data provider, then loaded in the temporary memory and variable of the SDT collection type and its contents were displayed on the form of the web panel. Instead of simply displaying the data, because it was available in the memory, we could have performed a process or operated on it without the need for accessing the database again in order to obtain the data. This has shown us the flexibility and power of data providers for loading data on a data structure, particularly one of the collection type. And we were also able to see how simple it was to declare what we wanted to be loaded, where Genexus solved everything necessary to accomplish our purpose. Later on, We'll be seeing other examples on different uses of data providers.